I'm your elector, P.J. O'Neill. Father Paul Colling celebrates our Eucharistic liturgy. This morning's announcements, there will not be life team this Sunday the 18th or edge on Wednesday due to unforeseen circumstances. Classes will resume next weekend. The Faith Formation Tailgate kickoff will be held this Sunday here at Prince of Peace. Join us for supper, yard games, and more in preparation for this Faith Formation school year. Priesthood Sunday is next weekend. Cards are available downstairs if you wish to write something to Father Paul. Join and meet other young adults in the Prince of Peace community September 25th for coffee and donuts downstairs directly after the 1030 Mass. Deacon Tom Martin will be leading a catechism class on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. between the 8 and 10.30 Masses in the lower level of the church. If you or someone you know is interested in joining the Catholic Church, registration is open for our OCIA program beginning this fall. Contact the church office for more information. The readings today are found in the Glory and Praise hymnal, number 927. Our opening song is number 570. All are welcome. Please stand. gather ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Welcome, everyone, especially those who are visiting our parish. Many people are asking when I travel, how's your Mass attendance? And I am happy to say, good. You know, we had Mass. It was very full last night. This is a good turnout. And we do have a Mass today at 5 o'clock, so I was anticipating some of it little being a little lighter. Mass is being lighter, but they've been good attendance, and that's great. Today, in the first reading and in the gospel, we hear about crooks and scandals. Huh? I guess sometimes you can learn a little bit from crooks and scandals for sure what not to do, huh? So the Lord is calling us to be prudent, to be wise, to be good stewards. As we begin this celebration, let us call to mind God's love and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words in what I have done and how I have done it. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore pass blessed the Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints. And you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us praise God by singing the glory. God, who founded all the commands on your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat? We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish, then, that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. So the rich man summoned him and said, what is this I hear about you? Go, prepare a full count account of your stewardship because you no longer can be my steward the steward said to himself what should I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm too ashamed to beg I know what I'll do when I'm removed from my stewardship that they will welcome me into their homes He called in his master's debtors, one by one. To the first, he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here, here is your promise note. Sit down quickly, write one for 50. Then he said to the others, then to another, the steward said, and how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said, here, here is your promissory note. Write one for 80. The master commended the dishonest steward steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of the light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in small matters was also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in small matters, well, they're also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, well, who will trust you with true wealth? If you're not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? After all, no servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. For you cannot serve God and mammon. The gospel of the Lord. Lord 
Welcome, everyone. And today um, we are having another Mass besides 1030 at 5 o'clock. So at 3 o'clock, we're having our religious formation tailgate. So to kind of kick it off, have some games in the front yard and, and then have Mass and then a little food. So if you want to come back for the food, it's at 6, probably 6 o'clock. The game's at 3 o'clock and Mass is at 5. So uh, this Mass today at 8 o'clock is being live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. So we welcome those who are viewing. We hope that one day you can join us here in church. The Gospel today from Luke is considered one of the most difficult scriptural texts to understand. Scholars said that even St. Augustine remarked that he couldn't believe that this story came from the lips of the Lord. Is this steward quick-witted, deceitful, or clever, or crook? Luckily, today we have laws that protect us from cheaters. When we buy a car, it's against the law to turn back the odometer. When we buy produce uh, at the grocery store, it's against the law to fix the scales. When farmers sell their grain, the scales are regulated by the government, so they can't be fixed. When you buy gasoline, well, we know because they're inspected that we get the exact number of gallons were indicated on the pump. And if we don't, they get in trouble. So what's going on? Well, make no mistakes. We are hearing about crooks and scandals today. And the Lord is saying, well, we can learn from them too. The first reading is from the prophet Amos who reports that merchants are blatantly cheating their customers by rigging the scales. And then in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus talks about the steward who wasted his master's property and then tries to get a golden parachute. The rich man was most likely an absentee landlord who owned a lot of land but didn't live there, probably lived quite a ways away from that. So he placed the steward in charge of his properties he was a manager. He was a steward of, had full control of renting the land, taking, selling and buying the produce, the grains. He could even make loans in the master's name. It was not uncommon for the steward to make a commission and interest. But in those days, if truth be told, they took an enormous amount of interest and commission much like those places that will cash your checks in advance. That's been taken care of now, but an enormous amount of interest on whatever was loaned. The commission was way too much after all. He was able to cut it, most of it, by 50%. The problem was the steward was squandering his master's property, so he must have done other things too. And realizing he was in a dilemma, being too ashamed to beg and too weak to dig dishes, he figures out a scheme to save his hide. Like I said, a golden parachute. So he calls all the debtors. He writes off part of the debts. Scripture tallers tell us that probably what he was really doing is the master was still going to get his just wages, but he was taking off his uh, undeserved commission. Yes, he is a scoundrel, a crook, a rascal, trying to get himself out of a mess he was in. Then if we go to the first reading from the prophet Amos, he preaches against the crooks and scandals of his time. The merchants were outright thefts, thieves. They tampered with the scales. They mixed chaff with the wheat, which even still happens today when farmers sell their grain. It has to be really clean. And then when the other merchants sell their grain to other countries, they weigh it down with dirt. They use false weights to unwary customers, to pay, so they have to pay more for gold or silver to balance the scales. And God says, I will not forget what you've done. And Jesus says to the, the, in the gospel, once the rich man was caught, he fired him. Again, so what can we learn? Well, I think four words the steward said will help us out. What should I do? What should I do? His reasoning was, I'm too Weak to dig and, and too ashamed to beg. So he gathers a, sp a scheme, makes a scheme what to do. But for us, you know, what is the right answer? What should I do? What should I do? Well, one of the most ways, I think, when we're caught in dilemma is to think, 
what would Jesus do? It was quite popular a few years ago. People wore armbands that had WWJD, what would Jesus do? Rather than living a life worrying about getting caught, wondering if I'm going to get caught in a lie, planning for the future, and all that, well, we know that sooner or later, the truth has its way. And someone, you have to set your account straight, just like today. That happens today. We see it all the time. People think they're getting away with something, and sure enough, it takes time, but sooner or later, the law catches up with them. We know that we have to be careful, make, be, make prudent decisions, because, for example, if you want to make sure that you don't get excessively heavy, you've got to watch your diet. If you have a preschooler, you know that they need naps in the day, otherwise they'll be cranky in the evenings. And if you're a student and you want an ace in exam, you know you have to study. Do the right thing. Same with marriages, you know. Do the right thing. Be faithful. And be faithful to one another. That's the right thing to do. There are many people that want to break up marriages. Believe it or not, I've seen it happen. Do the right thing. There are business people, too, that we have to watch what you do. You know, you think, oh, I can skim here, do that, do the right thing. Eventually, uh, things happen and the truth will be revealed. So when the steward says, what should I do? If getting caught teaches anything in life, it, t it tells us if we do the right thing, we don't have to worry. Look to the future, do the right thing. First time around, what would Jesus do? Then you don't have to worry about getting caught. There's another lesson. Jesus, the master commented on the dishonest steward acting prudently. In the, if, in the ways of the world, the steward shows good judgment, sound reasoning. Jesus says, be prudent as skillfully in the ways we serve the Lord. So be prudent. You know, all we have is a gift with God, and so we're called to use it, everything in life. And it's the choice is all. We have free will. You be prudent. And for example, on the internet, we use the web daily. We have access 24-7 if we want. We have it on our phone, in our pocket. Be prudent, carefully. We can use the internet to go down roads of darkness, to hate literature, pornography, wasted hours on YouTube, buying things we don't really need. Or we can be prudent with our use of web time and edify ourselves. We can use it to support a friend, view beautiful art from the Vatican, listen to edifying podcasts or documentaries, learn a second language, be prudent. Being prudent is being of service of God and one another, not hoarding ourselves, worrying about ourselves, trying to get a golden parachute, but being a good steward of what God has given us in whatever work, walk of life we find ourselves. For example, a sign in Chicago at a service station says this. There's a sign that says, we crawl under your car and take a look. We get our hands dirtier. We work harder and longer than any of our competitors to make your car run better. We are a service station you can trust with your car. That is the kind of commitment, that is the kind of service Jesus is asking us of today. WWJD, what would Jesus do? The right thing. As Christians, as Catholics, we are capable of doing the right thing. We have all it takes. We receive the grace of baptism and confirmation. We know the Ten Commandments. And we come here day on every weekend to renew ourselves, to ground ourselves in faith to be strengthened by the Lord, to go out in the world, that takes us away from what is right and good, the things that are not prudent. The world tries to take us away. If worldly people are capable of making great sacrifices for worldly things, how much are we, Christians, capable of making a great sacrifice for Jesus and his kingdom? This is the good news, and that's what the scriptures are reminding us today. The good news is that you and I have great power to do great things for Jesus and for God if we are wise. God can trust us. Today is Catechetical Sunday. 
And we are celebrating and asking the God to bless our catechists who are sharing their time and talent with our youth. When I first taught in a Catholic school long ago at uh, Carney Catholic, not Carney Catholic, uh, Central Catholic, a wise teacher said, well, you have a book, but you're the best book. Just open your heart and your faith and share it with the kids. Be a good steward. And I enjoyed teaching. There are other good stewards that need to be recognized once in a while, even though they don't need, they don't, they say, oh, it's nothing. One of the good example is the Carney Catholic high school football players and Coach Harvey. I'm very grateful for them sharing their muscle and strong backs. I had a bunch of cement in my front driveway. I had to go to the back, and they did it, and they had a lot of fun. They did it just like that. I tried to help, but I'm 64, and that was a little slower than they are. They did it quite well. So some of them are here today. Thanks for doing that. So what would Jesus do? Be prudent. Be good stewards. Those are the things we need to know today. Maybe a little bit more of a challenge from the prayer from Father Mark Link. It goes like this. Lord, open our ears to your words, even if it challenges us more than we want to be challenged. Lord, open our minds to your word, even when it disturbs us more than we want to be disturbed. Lord, help us put your word into practice, even if it means changing our lives more than we want to change. Above all, Lord, help us to realize that you want us to achieve great things, and we can do it by your grace. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us turn to God with our prayers of intercession. Let us place our concerns before God who hears the cry of the poor. The response is, let us pray, or we pray, uh, let us pray. For all those who have been appointed preachers and apostles in the church, that they may proclaim the one God with courage and Jesus, the mediator between God and humanity, with love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That there may be no trampling upon the needy and destroying the poor of the earth among the nations, but that honest and upright leadership may lift them up, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be given the grace to lead a quiet and tranquil life with devotion and dignity, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument in prayer before God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may choose whom we will serve with prudence and conviction, trustworthy before God in small matters as well as great matters that last forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been brought love through the ravages of sickness, poverty, depression, or grief, that God may lift them up from the dust and seat them with dignity and joy among the princes of his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed ones who serve the Lord honestly upon the earth, 
that they may be rejoicing with him in his holy kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our intentions, especially the people of Prince of Peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are traveling that they may have a safe journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an increase of vocations, a priesthood, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, God of justice and faithfulness to your word, we have offered petitions for all. May, you, may your answers to these prayers help all to lead a tranquil life to dignity. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory song is number 683, Christ Be Our Light, number 683.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what, we, what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercy and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. Jesus always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are a father, that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory without end as we acclaim. indeed holy Lord and be glorified O God who loved the human race who always walked with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scripture and breaks the bread therefore father most mercifully we ask that you send forth your holy spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of your son O Lord Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks and praise. He gave this chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, with all the bishops, the priests, the deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes that we may see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his, your com at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to new hope. Lord, remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. 
Commit to them to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form our divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your church peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. The people in the north transept will receive communion first, and then the Eucharistic ministers will go to the south transept. So you'll just have to wait a little bit, but they'll get there. This area will be normal. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Our communion song is number 610, You Are Near, number 610.
last few weeks, the bulletins have been quite newsworthy, so I hope you read them. Um, I don't know if there's something in this weekend's bulletin, but a weekend before, so it did talk about me going on a mini sabbatical. A sabbatical can be one month, two months, three months, six months, and I'm doing six and a half weeks. And Father Lou Nolette will stay at my house and minister to you um, throughout the week, so he'll be here to take care of it. And it'll go pretty fast, I believe, and hopefully it'll be good. They say, oh, we're so glad to see you back, Father, back, and rather than say, you're back. Hope not. <laughs> so anyway, I've been a priest 35 years. I'll be 65 in December and been here 10 years, so I feel like I need to step back, reboot, get some energy to go on. Um, they changed the retirement age to 70, so got to keep plugging. So I need a little R&R to kind of reboot. I'll be taking classes Monday through Friday. The coursework is one subject, the passion of Christ. Hmm, I wonder what the Lord's trying to tell me on that one, huh? So, but anyway, uh, it's something we can learn about. But it's a good place. It's at the North American College in Rome. It's a campus dedicated to English-speaking people. And uh, Noah Huddleston, who is from Kearney, is there studying as a seminarian. So I'll send some pictures back so you can be a part of it. But it's... Uh, the, provided by the diocese so the parish doesn't have to worry about finances. They, they take care of the whole thing and uh, it's a benefit to priests. Now I ask that those who are taking communion to the homebound to come forward. Ministers of the Eucharist, you are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and the homebound members of our parish family. Go to them with our love, our care, and our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and gentle healer, amen. After the final blessing, we will pray the vocation prayer, so if you see it, pull on it. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in ministry and in the manner of our way of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And we'll go ahead and do the vocational prayer. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Give young people the gift of discernment to find their way and embrace their true vocation, the life for which you have created them. In all that lies before them, help them discern a life that is pleasing to you, whether to Christian marriage, to priesthood, to consecrated religious life. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire them. Grant them the grace to embrace a life of joyful service. Fulfill their desire to make a generous gift of themselves to others after your example. Give them a loving support of family and friends as they prayerfully discern their vocation in this life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're sent forth at number 401, one Lord, number 401. 